Pakit na? Yeah, you go ahead. It's better oh. now. Yeah, Can you hear me now? Yeah, can you hear me now? Sure, audible. Go ahead. I am audible now? Okay. All right. So, we were talking about this stress configuration and we also talked about the fact that way back in 1990, IBM introduced MVS system complex which was also called Sysplex. And we also said that a Sysplex is similar to a loosely coupled configuration in that it consists of two or more CPCs that can share the data and the work together. Now, unlike a loosely coupled configuration, though the program running on the separate CPCs in the CPLEX can communicate with each other to coordinate their work, but in a base CISPLEX, CISPLEX there was an additional software which was kind of uh, involved and which was known as cross-system coupling facility. The cross-system coupling facility or XCF became available with a version 4 of MVS ESA and it's the facilitating com component of a base CISPLEX system. It is depicted in red color on the top of your screen which you should see right now. You should notice this figure that although each CPC has its own copy of MVS and therefore its own MVS image all of the CPCs in the complex can be viewed through a single system image. This means that we are talking about the fact that it makes managing a sysplex significantly easier than managing a loosely coupled system which you saw last screen. Also you must note that this configuration includes a sysplex timer. The sysplex timer ensures that the time of the day clocks on all the CPCs in the SysPlex are synchronized. So this was definitely an advancement which was prior to this. Now one another feature that was made available, available with MVS ESA version 4 was the support of enterprise system connection which is called ISCON which is actually known on your screen but uh, with the advent of ISCON as the IO or input out channel, the channels used fiber optic cables which carried light pulses rather than the electrical signals like the bus and TAC cables used with the parallel channels. Because they use light fiber optics, cables aren't susceptible to the external disturbances such as electromagnetic and radio frequency interferences and thereby improving the output tremendously. As a matter of fact, it's a, it's a very important thing to note that as a recent infall, a, improvement to ISCON channels, we have what we call it as FICON or fiber connection channels, which is a step further on ISCON. These channels provide these days an increased data transfer rate and maximum throughput rate over ISCON channels. And in addition, they can be also used over a greater distance than the ISCON channels. But nevertheless, the base SysPlex configuration basically was a, a advancement again over the existing one is what we are going to display over here. This was basically taken over by the next system which is called parallel, parallel SysPlex configuration which is the most complicated system that was basically uh, announced by IBM. We shall see that on the next screen. On screen number 9, we see, we show you what is called SysPlex configuration. IBM announced version 5 of MBS ESA. And that can currently support. Mr. Uday, your voice is breaking a lot. 
please uh, check for the connection or speak close to the mic. No, you're not audible. Uh, I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Now we can listen to you. So we were talking about past events. feature that was added way back in 1994 and is more Established by the system these goals are defined in terms of these and the features. Go ahead. Flex program that run on the servers at um, in other words, this uh, is the mainframe implement. Mr. Uday, sorry to disturb you actually. Yes. Uh, I mean, you know, your voice is breaking a lot. Uh, yes, I'm there. Tell me. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Uday, actually we are, uh, we are getting a uh, I mean, lot of distortion in your voice, so we are unable to uh, comprehend what you are speaking. So that uh, even we have complaints from the and the, uh, from the audience also. That voice is breaking a lot. Yeah, yeah. Even I can't hear you properly now. Previously I was hearing you properly. Now, so what do I do now? How do I decide to go? I'm, I'm no. here to the mic as much as I can. Now it is a little a bit clear. Okay. Yes, and uh, now even you are better, sounding better. <laughs> can, I, can I be heard now? Yeah, you are heard now, right. Now please go ahead. So up till what point I was basically audible? <laughs> so I mean it would be great if you can start with the slide itself. Alright, <laughs> okay. okay right. I will start with this slide again as if... Okay. Yeah, I will start with this slide again then. Okay, right, thanks. And Kevin. I hope that is okay, right, audible. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for the for this disturbance, guys. Uh, okay. Let's see if we can start once again. Okay. What you see on the screen is what we call it as parallel sysplex configuration. This parallel sysplex configuration is one of the most complicated architecture provided by IBM, and this is where the the power and the capacity of DBTU2 is leveraged using power parallel sysplex configuration. Though it's very complex in nature, but it's very easy to understand from our perspective. So we are going to go and get an overview 
of what a parallel suspect configuration is talking about by having by going doing a walk through over the system. So I'm, I hope I am audible right now. A parallel suspect configuration was essentially uh, you know put into force, put into action in 1994 by IBM. In the by the way of version five of MVS ESA. This new version supported at that time a con configuration which is what we call a test parallel sysplex. The most significant feature of a parallel sysplex is the coupling facility which you see on, uh, on the top of your or at the middle of your screen as a triangle marked in yellow color. The coupling facility is the new feature which was introduced by, uh, in 1994 and it provided for the integrity and serialization of the data that's shared across the sysplex. Now for the mission critical applications, it is very critical that two or more coupling facilities were employed. Because if a failure of in the main coupling facility, a backup coupling facility could be employed to provide uninterrupted processing of the data. And later we will see how DB2 basically takes leverage of the parallel sysplex configuration. Actually, when it was first introduced, the coupling facility had to be implemented on a separate hardware device as indicated in the figure in front of you. But more recent zero operating system architectures, however, can now support the coupling facility internally, which is called internal coupling facility. So this was the first part of it, when we talked about the coupling facility. The next important feature of parallel sysplex was that it included a workload manager or the WLM. Now the main function of the WLM was to balance the workload across the sysplex. In other words, the workload manager determined which CPC work was assigned to whom. It performed the task based on processing the goals established by the system administrators and the respective DBs. Those goals were defined in the terms of business needs and objectives rather than system related parameters as in the past. Now as said earlier, before going ahead, we should understand that in the parallel sysplex, sysplex con configuration, uh, we typically refer to this as the servers and the workstations that are used to initiate the programs that run on the servers, which typically refers to as a client. In other words, this is the mainframe implementation of a client-server system. And we use this terminology all throughout. The next screen, that is screen number 10 on your, uh, the, uh, the diagram number 10 on your screen, basically talks about a parallel sysplex and how it is installed in today's world. Just have a glance of it. I am putting recording on so that you will hear what this system is all about. Parallel sysplex therefore relies on one or more coupling facilities called CFs. A coupling facility is a mainframe processor with memory and special channels and built-in operating system. It has output devices other than the special channels and the operating system which is also very small. A coupling facility functions as a fast scratch pad. It is used for three purposes. One, logging information that is shared amongst all attached systems. Two, caching information such as for the databases that is shared amongst all other systems. And three, data list information that is shared amongst the attached systems. The information in the coupling facility resides in the memory and the configuration of a typical coupling facility has a very large memory. A configuration of a coupling facility can be a separate system or a logical partition which is called LPA. Okay, so that was how a real-time parallel system is what is installed these days. Now on the next screen, that is screen number 11, we have two parts. The first part talks about how parallel processing increases the th throughout for an online workload. And next screen, we are talking about 
how parallel processing decreases the processing time for a long running application. First diagram illustrates how two or more CPCs can process online transactions simultaneously. To accomplish this, the WLM or the workload manager comes into action. It works in conjunction with a transaction manager like CICS to distribute the IM uh, to distribute the applications to the available CPCs. You must note that the transactions that are processed in a parallel can be the same transactions or they can be different transactions. The second diagram on the lower part of your of your screen illustrates how a long running application can be split into smaller units of work that can run in parallel. For example, an application that updates database, data based on a table of transactions and then prints a listing of transactions could be divided into two programs. One that performs the update functions and the other that prints the listing. Then these two programs could run in parallel. As an application programmer, one can take the advantage of a parallel processing by not combining the related functions into a single program. Now in both of these diagrams that you see, you will notice that all the CPCs have access to the same data. If they did not have that access, they would not be otherwise able to process the same applications or the applications that, that use the same data. Parallel processing therefore depended or depends in large part on the ability of the CPCs to share the data with each other. On the next screen that we are going to see now, we are going to check and see how EP2 data is shared across on a parallel sysplex.